What's up guys, Johnny here and welcome back to another one of our story videos. Been quite some time once again, man, I'm hella busy right now. Sorry about the lack of content, but I'm here again and I'm about to show you my first ever super rare reward. Yes, it has happened. If you guys have paid attention to the stuff that I've been putting on social media, when was it? 365? Yep, that is it. So Cap 220 super rare guys, I actually managed to win a super rare a couple weeks ago. A couple of game weeks ago, I should say, but it came through a throwaway lineup. We gave away a DMP goalkeeper right here. Leo Roman was put in there just for the 0 L15, and all of a sudden, everyone stepped up and performed to a level that we have not seen before. So that took me up into the 19th position in Cap 220 Super Rare and allowed me to pick up my first ever Super Rare reward, Filip Benkovic. Now, this guy. I don't know what his issue is. Apparently, he has a chest injury. What? That is a very odd one. I guess he might have bruised a rib or something. But apparently, this is someone that actually was a former Celtic player. A huge talent at the time. Some boys have been telling me, especially Quinny. Um, and uh, yeah, he's only 25 at this stage of his career. So plenty of years ahead. And his scores are not bad. Honestly, if we look at the scores right here and we take away the DMPs, for a super rare, I am very happy with that. This is a player that is capable of hitting above 50 most of the time, which is great. So in eight of his games here where he started, he has gotten himself above 50 score. And for a super rare, again, pretty happy with it. Of course, not necessarily an incredible player or anything like that. And apparently, some people have been picking him up. Interesting to see. So he's kind of worth like 120, 140 euros. But talking about value, let's talk about something here. I feel like I might have overreacted at first. This whole list or play thing, at first I was really against it because I feel like it really overcomplicates the game to a point where, you know, it's not as simple as it should be. I think one thing that Sorer has been wanting to do for the past few months has mainly been trying to make the game and the onboarding as easy and understandable as possible. And I have to admit, they haven't really been too successful in it. I think they can do much better, especially with on homepage tutorial videos from content creators or whatever. They can employ anyone to do this type of stuff. It doesn't have to be content creators because they will get hated on anyways. So ideally, just hire someone and do a proper scripted tutorial video and have it on the homepage when people come into the game. And make it as simple as possible. Even with tutorial videos, though, the onboarding process has not been ideal. Even if you just look at the whole crypto side of the game, that kind of holds it back at the moment, even though it's obviously everything that makes this game what it is. We should never move away from crypto, but it needs to be easier to deposit and withdraw from the platform, making life a lot easier for new users and also existing ones. But this whole list or play thing, when it came about, I was actually kind of like, why? Like, why are we doing this? Why are we wasting resources on something that no one ever asked for? And I think I put it into the feedback channel on Sorare uh, itself as well. And I, I said, like, why are we doing this? Why, why is this change being brought in when it is something that no one really asked for? But the more the impact of the change has come in, the more impressed I've been. I mean, let's just take a look at a couple of examples. For example, here, Kevin De Bruyne, right? A player that you hold, a player that you not necessarily sell, a player that you ideally want to keep in your gallery for as long as possible. And just this past month, you can see, it's gone from like 1,200 up to like 1,430 euros. And it seems like his floor has risen as well. Or even a player like, I think Trent specifically right now has benefited from this the most. So if you have a player that is actually on form and is putting up great performances, this type of stuff happens. Like, his price has gone up so much. He was selling for 646 euros just earlier on. And now he has gone up to like 1,192. And his floor has risen massively. Obviously, it's also due to the fact that he has been doing well. But I think that is not necessarily an argument that you were able to bring lately. I've had multiple players in certain game weeks hitting the hundreds and bringing me amazing scores. And then I look at their price chart and their prices were going down. And I'm like, what? This is not how so rare used to be. When players were hitting hundreds, there were plenty of people getting going in and buying them immediately on the market. 
causing a rise of the player's price because people are trying to hop on a hype train, basically. And they fear that they are missing out on some great scores. Now, obviously, with Trent, he has changed his position. He's now playing as like a, some type of midfielder for uh, for Liverpool. And he seems to be extremely decisive heavy lately. But also with great, great AA scores coming in. I mean, 42 just right there in the Leeds United victory. 27.1 against Arsenal. 21 against West Ham. These types of things are obviously great. But yeah, I feel like things have gone up nicely, even with players that some people might not want. Like the floor has risen. Of course, some people are willing to not necessarily overpay as much, but you can see things have at least stabilized. They haven't necessarily gone down. And that's something I really enjoy with this whole list or play thing. Things were going down for far too long. And I think... I, I was completely wrong. Like for a year, you can see right here, a year ago, a rare Magnon was selling for 8,000. Oh my God. And he was coming down, coming down, coming down. And now this past month, things have been stabilizing and even picking up considering that we are in the month of May now and the European seasons are ending. But what I really like about this list or play thing at the moment as things stand is, I feel like it's it gets rid of the unnecessary listers, people that just list for the sake of it, people that no, no, don't necessarily want to sell the player, but they're just seeing if anything comes about, then maybe I'll go ahead and sell. And I feel like listing a player right now, if you want to sell a player, you are not going to be using him in your lineup. You're going to make sure he's not in a lineup and you're going to list him on the market for people to buy. And even though like this list or play thing, a lot of people are saying, oh, liquidity has gone down. Like people are not going to be buying these players. I'm seeing dots as consistently as ever before. I I'm not seeing anything that has necessarily slowed down. And for me personally, I've seen my gallery value go up as well. And it's not just the fact that people are raising the floor prices and trying to sell overpriced. There are plenty of people who are actually buying these cards at now higher prices than before as well. Look, I'm no financial advisor. I'm no technical analyst of the market or anything like that. But what I like about this feature is like the sentiment, right? So when I was going onto the market before and I would look at like, let's say Alisson, who I just recently picked up, right? When I was looking at players, look at that, Alisson. He went from 1,000 up to 1,300 just in this list or play uh, period. And people are buying into Liverpool for the next season already which is great. And he doesn't even have a card on the market because Liverpool is playing literally every single game week lately. Midweek, weekend, midweek, weekend. And that leads to a player like him becoming really scarce. And that, once again, <clears throat> will give smart people out there an opportunity to go ahead and buy these players knowing that there will be a time where no one will be listing their Alisons and they can capitalize on that. Now, knowing that Liverpool are playing literally every game week and obviously it's a top, top team, People want to go ahead and own these cards and use them in their game weeks. If you are someone that now has known about this like a month ago and you pick these players up, let's say you bought them at like 1,100 and now you were able to sell at 1,300. That's great. That gives traders a new opportunity. People that want to plan ahead and, you know, do things on the market and profit that way. You can do that, it seems. And I personally really like that fact as well. But I generally like and enjoy that people are not just listing for the sake of it. So once again, going back to that topic, I feel like Alisson, for example, <clears throat> if I, if we were in the previous time, right, where we didn't have list or play, and this was the last sale for 1,000 euros, people would just be putting their lineups in, locking them down, and immediately he would be listed around these price ranges once again, even like in the middle of him actually playing the match. So that would just be people like, okay, just in case I can get out of this for a price that I'm happy with, if I get an offer, I'll decide upon it. But now it takes those people out of the market. So if you're not 100% convinced that you want to get rid of a player, you're just not going to list it. So if people are not necessarily listing their players and competing to be the lowest price, that really kind of helps the market from what I could tell here. So again, I got to say, I might have been wrong on this whole list or play thing. Now, obviously, it's very early. Don't get me wrong. I'm just telling you my first week impressions. 
at first I was completely against it. Now I'm slowly coming over to the side of Sorir and understanding why they are doing this. And I still think the game is being complicated a little bit too much. I see a lot of people saying that once you sell a player, then it should be taken out of the lineup and cancel the lineup. But I feel like that's not what they are going for. This was exactly what they wanted to go for. They wanted these players to be a little bit more scarce. And immediately, even for Sorare themselves, public offer 1,000 euros. Right when he's playing and no one is listing, on the auctions, 1,300 euros. And that's once again revenue for the company. And at the end of the day, guys, we need Sorare to make money. We cannot have Sorare being given out money all the time and not necessarily recouping it and losing all their revenue as well. We want this company to do well. We all love this game. So at the end, at the end of the day, when Sorare is making money as well, at some point you got to be like, hey, you know what? Do it. Like, I'm happy that you guys are doing well and let's just keep building this project. You can't be like, oh, they're taking away our money. They're just putting it all into their pockets. The players are not being given any money. There's not enough ETH payouts and all that good stuff. I understand that it might come across like that at, at, some, at certain points, especially with the implementation of the new 5% fee. But I personally feel like this game is slowly moving into a little bit more of a sustainable model, a market that isn't as panicky as well. And it kind of helps, you know, tuning off of it a little bit, which might be a bad thing, but also a good thing. Like lately, I've not been in the market constantly and looking to buy players, but at the same time, when I was on the market, maybe at a fraction of a time that I used to be, I still made some deals happen. So it's okay, I guess. At least for me personally, this whole list or play thing has been an up and down of emotions. And I'm really looking forward to see how it will impact everything in the future. But yeah, having said all that, the boy got a new super rare. Let me show you. His name is Andre Almeida. There he is. So. After getting Romeo Lavia for 0.33, I think, I've got myself Andre Almeida. Now, some people might be like, who the hell is Andre Almeida and why did you get him? So last purchase was 693 euros. And then after that, it was me. Three euros less. Let's go. <laughs> but let's go into his uh, specific stats here. <clears throat> and let's go into Valencia specifically, actually. So Andre Almeida is another 23 midfielder. Um, that used to be at Sporting, I believe. I'm actually not too sure where he was before this. Let me just double check. Let's go all time and let's go SO5 scores. I'll probably be able to tell where he used to play. Vitoria Guimaraes. I'm assuming that was him being loaned out as well, but enough of that. Why did I get Andre Almeida? First of all, he's a very consistent scorer. I've been watching a couple of games of him. I'm very impressed with his ability to get past people, dribble past them, play a good pass. And also, most importantly, this boy takes set pieces. Yes, 32 uh, corners taken in the last 15. He takes free kicks as well. Let's go, buddy. I love that. He's not on penalties yet, but Valencia currently is in the 17th position fighting against relegation. If Valencia could go down, I'd really appreciate that because I think they would smash the second division to pieces because it's a big club and they should not be in the second division. But even if they do stay in La Liga, I expect them to do much better next season than 17th. That is just not acceptable for a team like Valencia. So I'm really hoping that we can see this team go up and what I really enjoy with this as well is there are so many under 23 players at Valencia. First of all, Mamardashvili, obviously the goalkeeper. I don't know if he's going to stay or not, but he's a great player. Then you have players like Jenk, who has been loaned out for Olympique Lyon. He has been playing plenty over there. Guillamon is there. Uh, in terms of uh, midfielders, obviously you have Almeida, you have Nico Gonzalez coming in from Barcelona, Musa. Ilaix Moriba, who was a big talent at Barca at one point as well. Samuel Lino, who's a beast. I don't know if he's under 23 until the next season as well. But it's a team that will give you plenty of under 23 stacking abilities as well. But generally speaking, the main reason as to why I really got him was just like, this kid is really good. Like, I really, really do enjoy his style of play. Don't worry about the DMP right there. Uh, they rotated heavily uh, for that Valencia team because they have a big game against Villarreal coming up in the midweek where I will actually be using him. 
So yeah, I got myself another under 23 midfielder that I'm excited about. This game week specifically, by the way, what a freaking mess. I mean, man, I've been, I have not been successful with, with my lineups lately. It's, it's really like annoying. I haven't been able to get the best out of my gallery and my players haven't really been performing to that level. Like they have been good, but they have been close to rewards, just not being able to make it over that threshold. And uh, this was one of those teams. I mean, it did incredible at first. Obviously, um, I'm very happy with Salah scoring, with Van Dijk clearance off the line. Bacacetas was on, was on 53 points. Then he picked up a red card with an incredibly stupid move. I'm fully convinced now that he's going to leave Trabzon for the next season, which I don't mind, I guess. But ideally, I would like for him to stay in Turkey. Uh, but yeah, having said all that, Jonathan Vieira, incredible game for Las Palmas. Got himself 96.5. And yeah, we have basically wasted three decisives in this team. And uh, the captain choice really, really hurt me there. So yeah, no reward for us. Missing out by like, I guess, 25 points by the end of this. And obviously the um, red card for Bacasetas, if it wasn't there and he played the full game, we could have done much better there. Um, going into All-Star Rare Pro. I mean, two surprising goals conceded for Real Oviedo. I'm just happy that they haven't lost. And they are obviously going to uh, stay in the second division for the next season. So I'm really happy that I have Brat here. Grimaldo coming up with 100. Uh, late game penalty. He took it and he took it well. Hill, <sighs> just doing Hill things. So far in my gallery, a 55 and a 60. I'm just waiting for that big moment for him. And Gabriel Florentin in technically an easier matchup for them. They had like 70% possession, but couldn't do much. And yeah, only late into the game, he actually picked up some points. He was down at like 37 or something. So a bit of a letdown there. And Taremi keeps scoring. I, I'm really, really impressed with Taremi. He is incredibly consistent in what he does. So uh, right now with the last game's stretch at uh, Porto and Benfica, specifically in the Portuguese league, they're both fighting for the title, desperately wanting to win every game, which puts me into a good spot of knowing that these guys will give their all. And yeah, sadly, that lineup is going to miss out on a reward by 15 to 20 points as well, despite racking up 370. And it's just sadly not enough these days. Cap 270 rare. Uh, Adan coming up with a 60 despite conceding. That is amazing. Florentino Ruiz did extremely well in his matchup as well. You can see with the 10% bonus on him, he goes from a 79 to an 88, which is incredible. And Ramiro Sordo might be one of the more consistent under 23 forwards. I mean, this is a forward, guys. And look at those scores. That is really good. Like, if you have his super rare, you're probably a happy boy. Does his super... His super rare is not on the market. Yeah. His super rare is probably worth quite a bit throughout this summer period, I gotta say. I really do like him. Sforza, a bit of a letdown lately. I don't know what the hell is going on with him. His scores have been awful in the past, like, six, seven game weeks. And I really hope he steps up again. Uh, but yeah, going away from that, cap 270 super rare. This was basically a punty one uh, because the cap 240, I couldn't hit the threshold, the cap point total without going over it. Uh, uh, so I had to go 270 this time around. And uh, yeah, we had a big chance missed for Preciado. We had a huge chance missed for Mr. Jenk Tosun as well. And uh, Lavia did well, I guess, again, in a game where they have conceded three goals. It just doesn't help that Southampton is terrible. This was obviously a buy for the next season, not necessarily for this one anyways. And then uh, Figal, I don't know what this boy is doing. He, some games he's exceptional, some games he's just awful. And I, I, I just don't seem to be hitting the good ones often enough, I guess. He has helped me win the Super Rare, though, so I'm very, very thankful for that. Uh, Florian Vietz didn't do anything. Balde, the new purchase, came in with a 61. Really liked his style of play. I think he's the future of that left-hand side at Barca, which really, really excites me. The older he gets and the better decisions he makes moving forward, especially with his passing play. I'm excited about him. Osako, another clean sheet. Osako has been really, really good lately. And I think his price is probably going to keep going up now as well. As we go into the summer period, he's going to be my only summer goalkeeper as things stand. And then on the 23 Rare Pro, I mean, gets on. Lads, he played such an unbelievable game. Like, I'm not even joking. That was probably one of the best games I've seen someone play in Turkey. The guy got eight tackles in. Eight freaking tackles coming up to a total of 24 points. 
in terms of possession, he won 23 duels. <laughs> he was everywhere. And even in attack, he won a bunch of contests. He dribbled past so many people so many times and actually played some good passes that were creating chances as well. But people decided not to shoot, which was annoying. But man, what a performance from Getson Fernandez. I would be incredibly surprised if this boy actually stays in Turkey. He is too good for the league. He was the man of the match by a country mile for me. I don't care who else scored the goals. He was the man. And I'm excited to see his future. Musiala and Bayern winning a big game. Obviously very, very important. De Ligt once again coming up with a decent, respectable score. That is why I captained him initially. And uh, yeah, I mean, no one captains their goalkeeper. So in terms of outfield players, I captained the right one there. Uh, but yeah, Musiala and Bayern Munich, obviously a working progress right now. They are going after the title. Goretzka once again injured. So maybe Musiala keeps on starting, uh, which is going to be a good thing. And in terms of the next week, if we go into the lineup builder, this is the lineup that I've got, lads. It is with Mohamed Salah, with Balik Visha Super Rare, Van Dijk, Alisson, Andre Almeida there as well. Now, historically, obviously not necessarily an incredible lineup that wins loads of rewards, but individually, when we look at the players, these are players that are very much capable of doing well. Balik Visha has scored in the cup final midweek, and uh, in I think they have won the Belgian Cup now, so congratulations to them. Andre Almeida was rested on the weekend to be able to play against Villarreal, so I'm excited about that, especially considering they're playing at home. And then hopefully Liverpool can finally go in and get a clean sheet at home. They are winning games. Salah is scoring, which I'm very happy with. But I need everything to come together for me, especially on a midweek. I'm excited. What is the prize pool? Oh, we do not have any, any prize pool for that there yet. Yeah, interesting. Let me see. Maybe I can see it here. All-star rare? Did I want to play all-star rare? I guess. No, no, I didn't want to play all-star rare. Yeah, Hill has no game there. Let me just check, change that right now. All-Star Rare Pro, Van Dijk, uh, Alisson, Almeida, Alex Garcia sadly injured, Salah. And then I have the choice between Angulo, Miguel Torren, who is a beast. Um, I just don't know if he's going to play. He has been on and off a bit lately, so I'll be looking for more info. Balde could potentially be rested against Osasuna, which is a worry. Balik Vizha is not guaranteed to play. And it's a tough, tough opponent. So I still have a choice to make for the fifth choice here. Uh, I will probably think about that for quite some time. I'm going to captain Van Dijk again because he has been very consistent with his performances, even when we have been conceding. And of course, he fell down to the floor and Tottenham scored and it looked bad, but I'll still go with that team. I'm going to keep backing my Liverpool boys. And honestly, it has been exceptional. Being able to watch Liverpool play and actually owning their cards has been so much fun. The same as with Bayern Munich. I'm going to keep building my stacks in those areas. I'm going to keep buying into teams that I really enjoy watching. So I'm probably going to get a try and get a full Bayern Munich stack for the next season. I'm going to try and get myself a full Liverpool stack as well. I'm obviously missing three pieces at Bayern and two at Liverpool. And at times, we're going to mix them up and see what happens as well. But yeah, man, let's start play. What do you think about it, guys? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll be really looking forward to seeing your guys' opinions on it. I personally was at first completely against it, but I'm looking at the evidence now and I'm seeing that the actual good players on the platform are now going up again, which is exactly how it should be. I feel like they have been quite undervalued lately and it's really nice to see the market stabilize somewhat. Even if the prices are not going up, even if they stay the same, that is good because things have been up and down too much, actually mainly down too much lately. And yeah, I really enjoy it at the moment. We'll see how it comes out in like a year time. We can look back at this and be like, oh, Johnny, you were completely wrong. It was actually bad. Or we can look back and be like, hey, you actually were right in saying that you were wrong. So we'll see how all that goes. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you on the next one. Hopefully, finally again with some rewards. But Won my first ever super rare, so I'm pretty happy with that. Take care, guys, and peace.